All right, there we go. Hello, everyone. How's it going? Team here, and this is BXJS livestream. We are continuing our work with uh, Deno, and I guess uh, over today's livestream, we're actually gonna finish that because there's well, I mean, there's not really much left to do here. Um, yeah, and the gist is we are basically gonna um, so we build the whole basic web server with login, you know, authentication, authorization. Uh, and what's left is to add a simple API that would allow us to deploy a function and then the command line or deploy a Deno project, I guess, if you would, and then uh, write a simple command line uh, interface that would actually do the whole publishing thing. So this is what I'm planning to do today. Uh, I guess we're going to start with building a simple command line interface that would do the publishing. So the idea is that command line is going to First of all, take the input script that you give it, uh, build it using the deno build command, and then send that to the server as the single JavaScript file that is going to be deployed within the server. And the deployment, I mean, for now, again, you know, I, I really wanted to do it in a way that uh, essentially is, utilizes the deno isolates. But since this is not quite yet there, we're going to hold this off a bit. And for now, I'm just going to deploy using the uh, processes and just spawn another den process with uh, sorry den, den process no deno process with the script that is being sent by the um, command line interface right so let's just go ahead and create the cli folder and create a main.ts here i'm going to stick with typescript for now and um now we're going to figure out how the deno works with command lines because i honestly have no idea so i'm just going to go into deno land and see the uh, standard library, they probably have something. I mean, that's it's gotta be relatively easy, right? Um, Deno Cli tutorial, is there a tutorial for that? It's gonna be like a lot uh, faster. Okay, so we got the manual actually. Does it mention command line interfaces? The uh, client, my awesome Cli. Okay, yeah, promise. Okay, no, 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 install. Um, right. Okay. Yeah. That doesn't seem if, okay. So we can basically, if we use import meta main, we can detect if that is being run as a CLI or if that's being executed as a third party thing, which I guess is fine, but that's not exactly what we want. Um, do we have like our arguments or something? Blah, 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 blah. No, that's not then a REPL. Okay. Not here at least. Um, let's see, getting started with Deno, then the first report, you know what, whatever, that's, that's perfectly fine. We're going to figure it out ourselves. Um, so what do we have? We have, I mean, we would need file system, obviously, because we would have to read, write and build things. We would need HTTP. Probably I'm going to use the existing, uh, clients. So let's see, third party, we got, I remember there was the, yeah, HTTP client. So we got this Kai thing. Uh, do we have the arguments parsing? No, we don't. Uh, okay, cool. Uh, that's fine. So what do we want? We want, I guess, API reference is probably got what we want. Uh, okay, let me just decrease the size a bit. And we got dot args thing, which I assume is exactly what we want. Deno args will contain whatever you pass to it. Okay, cool. So this is basically what we want, right? So we're going to say we got our args from Deno and um, for now let's just actually log it and see what the hell happens. So I'm going to say Deno allow read in our case, right? And then CLI main TS, right? Arguments are empty and then let's make a folder test. Uh, yeah, I guess I'll just call it test for now. And then let's make a simple server.ts and I'm just going to grab the tutorial thing. So this is basically what we are going to be deploying. We're going to be deploying a very simple server that just sends hello world, right? So and uh, this is going to be test simple server. Come, come on now. Okay, cool. So that's very easy. So basically, we are just gonna take the first argument, right? And it's going to be entry point. Let's call it this way. Right. So theoretically, if I do that, we should now see the entry point exactly. Okay, so the next step would be to let me just command this. So grab the first 
argument and consider it. Uh, sorry, consider what? Consider it tree point. Right. Um, so compile given entry points. I cannot type today for some reason. Using Deno. Okay, I remember Deno had the interface for compiling stuff uh, exposed. So you could actually, yeah, there we go. There's a bundle command. Okay, so we got unstable. Yeah, API is still not verified, but that's perfectly fine. So uh, maybe diagnostics output too. Okay, so we don't need any overrides. So basically, we just want that, right? I wonder uh, optional sources, optional options, compiler options. Okay, I guess we would need some options because we want to say um, what exactly are we doing here. So then a bundle and then we're gonna give entry point, right? I am assuming by default, it's just gonna build it as I honestly have no idea. Okay, so what is the compiler options in this case? Let's see. Allow JS is there like output uh, output dear. Uh, so I don't see so how would they? What would the name be for it? Um, output output the directory declaration files emit no helpers implicit. Okay, redirect output structure to directory only impacts then a compile. Okay, we don't care about then a compile in this case. It's got it like there's got to be a way of Okay, you know what, let's just try to run that and see what exactly it writes to the um, right, I guess it doesn't Oh, wait, is it literally just gives us the output? So if I do console log outputs, and then I do console log maybe diagnostics, I assume it just compiles it to memory basically and you can do whatever the hell you want with that is is that correct? Yep, uh, that is exactly what happens. So basically this output is output code in our case, right? And we don't really care about diagnostics here. So I'm just gonna admit that. Um, and we're just gonna do that, right? So we now have the code, which means we don't like we don't even need to write that to file, right? We just need to take that code and send it as bundle to our server. So the next step would be to grab our um, we don't need FS here. That's great. Uh, so we could take this Kai thing and just use that to send it to our uh, nice server. Okay, import Kai from Kai, that is not gonna work. Uh, if you're using Deno, there we go, we can use unpkg, that is perfectly fine with me. So we got that. And then it's gonna be Kai and then something else. I'm just gonna do it like this for now. And we got post. Yeah, so we're gonna be using post JSON. Okay, so I guess we should do some proper logging here. So let's let's do it like, I guess like this. So um, deploying and then the entry point name that should be fine. Da -da 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 -da. So let's see compiled, uh, I guess bundled, bundled code proceeding to deploy, All right? So we're saying okay, we bundle that stuff. Now we're going to send it to the server Send the code to the server. And in this case, we are just going to say localhost, uh, which address did I use last time? Okay, so we got our main TS. And I think it was like 8000. 8, yeah, okay, so we can say localhost 8000. For now, we're just going to hard code that. And here's the question. JSON foo through so does is the JSON property that it needs or what uh, to the credential same origin JSON objects JSON string. Yeah, okay. So this is basically we just we say JSON and then we say a new object. It's going to be codes and let's call it output code, right? So we do that and we send it on response awaits Kai post. There we go. I mean, do I really need this Kai thing? I could use fetch, right? So they should work equally good. So I guess let's just eliminate the dependencies and just use fetch now. Which means that if we are using fetch, uh, first of all, this is going to be slightly different. We're gonna do this and then options gotta be so it's gonna be methods post, right? So we're posting stuff. Uh, oh boy, how do you post uh, 
fetch post JSON. I could never remember the stuff that you need to add to fetch to actually do a post request with JSON because <laughs> that stuff is never easy. Okay, right. So accept application JSON. I, like I still don't understand why they couldn't add a simple flag to do that, which I guess, you know, it's kind of the library thing to do, but come on. How frequently do you send something that is not JSON to the server? Um, right. Uh, hey, Kevlar, welcome to the stream. Thank you for your subscription three months. Holy crap, man. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Okay, uh, continuing, we got codes, output code. I wonder if that would, like theoretically that should work, right? All right, let's see. Okay, hey guys, welcome to the stream. All right, so we send that and then let's just say response and uh, you know what, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna do that response. Uh, you haven't missed mu much, so I started building a command line that takes the any Deno script you give it, bundles it, and sends it to the server. That's basically all it does for now. I will need to open another terminal over here, go to Deno pass, and then we're gonna. <laughs> it's almost over. Yeah, yeah, you're very late. We're we're done basically. I'm just wrapping this up. That's it. Goodbye. I'm done for today. <laughs> All right, so we got the server working. Oh, but that won't work because we don't actually have the definition for our um, for our method, right? So we would need new file uh, deploy ts, right? So we're gonna need that, and uh, I'm gonna. So we don't need test for now. I'm just gonna grab that, and I'm gonna basically do the same thing. So we don't need JVT config. We don't need DB here. We don't need any of that for now it's just gonna be da -da -da, login register yeah i guess <coughs> apologies i guess for now we're just gonna have deploy method and that's basically it right so there's gonna be this and then it's gonna be deploy and for now what i'm gonna do context body so we're gonna grab the code from body right and to do the context response we're just gonna say success true for now all the time and then i'm just gonna do console log code so we should see a very long line of code once we run our uh, command line script uh, but i also have to wire it up to the server itself right so source uh, deploy.ts and we want set up out. I did I expose? Oh yeah, I export deploy. Why did I do that? We don't need to export deploy, right? So well, it's called setup out, which is also not quite correct. Call it setup deploy. Okay, and we need to do boom, 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 protected routes. I guess we could abstract the whole thing. So oh yeah, okay, it takes the router, which means we should say set up it let's say set up deploy protected router let's deploy routes and then attach router to the app uh let me see the chat so i tried out the new microsoft terminal it's yeah it's great like this they really made a great piece of software like i've been using this since like it is now version 0 0.7 or something. And I've been using it since like 0 0.8 already. Okay, I've been using it since it was 0 0.3 and it's the best terminal I've tried for Windows. The fact that you can easily switch between like, uh, you know, VSL, PowerShell or whatever you want immediately is, is just really awesome. But anyway, so we got the protected routes, we got the deploy, and we wired this up so we no longer need main. Okay, let's just start that. Okay, that worked fine which means that we could now run the key we should bundle the stuff and send it okay permission denied all right and we need we don't yeah we need to allow read and we also need allow net because we want to send requests right uncaught error sending request to url connection closed before message completed uh interesting authorization all right, because we don't have uh, authorization. Yeah, right. Okay, so our CLI has to be a bit more complex because we need to log in first, which uh, I guess, you know what, for now, I'm just going to go entry point. Let me see. Here's the question. So, const entry point. I'm just going to destruct, deconstruct it this way. And uh, let's see. I'm console log args 
So I'm assuming it's not going to do anything smart with arguments, right? And uh, let me just do return over here real quick. So if I do this and then I say, uh, say minus minus token equals one, two, three, I assume, uh, right, okay, yeah, 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 you don't like that. Uh, then no, what was it? Exit? Yeah, there we go. That should work. Okay. Right, so it's basically gonna, like the problem with this is that we have to reinvent our own arguments parsing because it can be here or it can be at the end, right? So, yep. Yes, so we say token one of three. Right, it's gonna be at the end. Okay, so I guess the s stupid way of doing that is gonna be. Uh, okay, so we're gonna say token that is gonna be args fine. So we're just gonna we're just gonna find the. Hmm, how do I do? Do I find it? I guess yeah. I guess find would work. No, fi you know what? Let's do find the index. So let's do token index is gonna be find index uh, and um, I guess string. So that string starts with minus, uh, whoops, minus minus token, right? So we do that, this is our index. Uh, then we say token is gonna be equal args. Now which one mutates arrays or returns a section of array and I think splice remove the elements from array, okay. So start number to delete, which means that we say token index and we say one. So this is going to give us our token from which we will replace the minus minus token equals with nothing, which means this is going to be our token, which means that entry point is going to be args pop. So whatever is left, right? Entry point with token for now i'm just gonna print the token to know that it actually works uh no that does not work why are you not working replace does not exist on properties wait what why, why does replace not exist on string uh hey michelle welcome to the stream uh let me see the chat why is i'm very happy it's like rival solution doing dev on windows it's not you couldn't before but always feel yeah like it definitely the windows was absolutely missing a proper terminal emulator and this thing does a very good job oh i guess right because it will return an array this is what it tells me token splice um what are you cannot delete property of object array uh-huh okay how do we do this properly? I guess, yeah, okay, you know what? Let's let's do it this stupid way, right? So we got this token, we got this, and then we got, um, I guess I could do it. Okay, wait a second. I should not do it this way. We find it and then we just replace, nah, 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 token, let's call it token string. And then token string is gonna be replaced and then what we do is we filter so that string is a string that is not equal to token string, right? So we basically filter that out and whatever is left should be what we want. Uh, what Chrome extensions do you use? Um, I mean, not that many. It's mostly stuff like, you know, Bitwarden, or uBlock Origin, uMatrix, uh, Gmail stuff. And that's basically it. There's like a few minor ones for specific websites like Reddit Enhancement, and that's pretty much it. So it's mostly mostly you block on new matrix. Okay, so it works when we do it this way. Let's see if it works if I do it token one of three. That does work, which is great. So which means we could um we could generate a token now and use it for our header. Uh where's our test? How do we, how did I generate the token? Hell if I remember that. <laughs> All right, um, let me see. So we need authentication bearer header, if I remember correctly. Let me just quick, real quick check that. Uh, wrong password, blah, blah, blah. No, wait a second, where did I? Oh yeah, it was in the main TS, that's right. I'm already forgetting what I did last time. Okay, so we need the authorization header, which means, authorization so we need bearer and that should be our token right there we go okay 
Um, you matrix keeps breaking websites I visit. Yes, the first time you use it, it's gonna break a lot of websites because a lot of websites rely on third party staff that, well, some of it shouldn't even be there. The other, it kind of needs it. So it will take a bit of time to configure it. But you know, when I go to, I don't know, New York Times or whatever, and when I see the matrix expanded, um, like, you know, there's the, the amount of garbage they try to load is terrifying. So I'm okay with some websites not working and with me, you know, and needing like two seconds to fiddle around with it. I'm totally fine with that. If you are not fine, then it's perfectly fine as well. I mean, you may, you block origin does a decent job at uh, basically preventing most of the things, but I just, uh, I just like my stuff like this basically. Okay, um, let me think. So we, okay, we need a token. Before that, uh, we need our curl commands. Uh, I think we already did that. So, oh, we actually, no, wait, I guess that token won't actually work. Right, so we need a register command. There we go. And then we need a login command and this should give us our token. So there's our JVT. That's not the best way of doing that. But um, <laughs> let me think. So we do deno. Da, da, da. Yes, not like this. We want to token at the end because it's easier to write this way. Just paste that. We don't need this quotes. I think that should work. Uh, syntax error unexpected. Okay, authorization replace there. Okay, so why are you not happy? About no, that did work. So why is it error out? Unexpected end of JSON input. Did I actually send JSON back? JSON stringify success true. Yes, I did. Uh, okay. What am I missing? Uh, you know what? We could just we could just do that, right? So this should this should work perfectly fine. Okay, response, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so this works. It does send response, but it doesn't seem to handle it. So, right, so we send, oh, God damn it. <laughs> I'm sending it to a wrong URL. I was like, why is this not working? Um, then our, okay, this should make it work. Uh, let me see the chat. Uh, what all the garbage they try to load and why should we block it? Well, majority of it is trackers and, you know, the fingerprinting stuff and whatever you can imagine basically there. I like, I don't know. Uh, take any website if you open it to just demonstrate my point is that so you have this one signal and segment that by default, this loads only one additional JavaScript, right? But if I were to permit that and refresh, uh, whoops, and refresh the page, this one, one signal script will expand into two. And then if I permit the other ones is going to be like 20. And loading and executing all of that is really damn expensive and slow. So the U matrix actually makes websites a lot faster. And like, this is one of the reasons why I'm using it. And the second one is privacy, obviously. Hail Trendor, yes, this is indeed Z shell. Uh, and um, yeah, this is my primary shell. I just use it all the time. Okay, I think that should work. There we go, it actually worked and undefined. <laughs> why is it undefined? Oh no. What did I screw up this time around? Okay, so we got this. We Okay, we got code, we got output code, send it to the body, context body code. Um, okay, sure. Let's see, what do we have in body like this? Maybe I messed up with my params somewhere. Restart that, do that. Uh, right, okay, okay, JSON code. Oh, all right, because it's type right. Oh, God damn it. I forgot that it was like the, the whole value thing. And then code. There we go. This is what I want to do, right? Okay, uh, let me start that. Is this the Windows terminal with VSL? Yes, it is the Windows terminal with VSL. And it's pretty great. I mean, I'm using it as my primary development environment for my daily work. Cool. So we got the file, we got the data. Now we need to execute that. Now here's the question, can we execute that? without actually so one way the stupid way of executing this would be to just write this down into a file somewhere in a temp folder and then do you know spawn this separate command and send then or run whatever with this specific code right um but here's the question 
and we just execute from memory because this is essentially was you know again coming back to my whole grand plan the idea was that we could like ship the pre-bundled thing or maybe not even pre-bundle maybe the server would handle the bundling uh the downside of that is because is obviously you would have to package and send the whole project but that's a different question and then um we would have deno executed for us in a single isolate right so that would definitely be possible from memory now doing that from should, should work right so we got deno is there like a run command or something? there is deno run okay so what does it do run options okay uh default blah blah blah. okay run response a new deno process okay so what can we give it args current work dear environment okay so this is literally just like exit re uh, the mapping for deno run that we usually do when we do deno but we pass it is there a de um, deno run uh from string is there is there like there's got to be a way to do the same thing as you do with a node when you evaluate the string right uh deno run args uh, deno manual run sub processes strings how do i read a file in deno uh, no that's not what i want to know so let's see the deno manual again all right run run sub process there we go echo hello um not gonna work is it uh hello to do, do oh i guess you literally okay so deno run is literally the thing that spawns the sub process so yeah if you want to run the deno this is what we want right so we want uh, that stuff and deno run so we're gonna say deno run i'm just gonna hard code allow read allow net for now mm -hmm. <laughs> Now here's the question. In memory might be spawn other problems like a situation two or more deploys at the same time or a bigger amount of data. Uh yeah, potentially. So it, it's like the question is, you know, it, we will come down to experimenting and figuring out what would be the best because um ideally you want to spawn that isolate and then the garbage collection will just collect everything that is not a deployment uh but yeah let's see so we got that we got the status uh, da, 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 da. okay so let me just copy the whole thing you know what i'm going to use that as my starting point so we got the code from the p status if the code is zero okay so this will actually wait for it to execute which is not something we want uh because if we're running so our current deployment is a server which we run right which means that um it's not gonna end which means that this function will never complete so i'm gonna create this deployments array here and what we're gonna do instead is we're gonna say deployments push p so we're gonna add it to the array and instead of awaiting this i'm gonna use a callback on promise uh, what was it? I forgot. That was the wrong way of doing that. Okay, so we do then, and then we got function that deconstructs the first argument to code, right? And then we could do that. We can kill that. Okay, that looks, uh, yeah, that should be a sync. Right, so we're going to wait for that. If it's code zero, then we're right. If it's otherwise, we do the error thing. That looks good enough, I think. Uh, now, okay, the thing is that this will only finish if it's exited, as far as I understand. But uh, let's try that. All right. So if it's if it's not success, it's going to fail anyway. So that should be sufficient. Theoretically, if we run our simple server, we should. Okay, first of all, that's not going to run. That's actually going to fail, and it's a good test. I'm going to run our server again, and then I'm going to run the deployment again. That's going to fail because ah, oh, god damn it because our database is not persistent which means we have to do the uh yeah that's wait a second what oh permission didn't oh 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 okay we need allow run interesting wait a second i thought is our database persistent or not let's try that again okay it actually works right we have the jvt uh please provide a name oh right i forgot the name okay so yeah you know what let's just dump it into a file for now and do it this way so let me think so we need the fs module from deno right 
And I mean, I guess you could use it as a URL thing, but uh, that's fine. It's totally fine. Let me think. So we need FS. Then no, where is our manual? And we want standards. Uh, is there like FS something? No. Okay, this doesn't have anything. Then we go to the FS folder and there's got to be, there we go, standard modules documentation for FS. And there is FS, FS readme. I think this is a bit too many FSs. There we go. Okay. So in our case, we need uh, to, to, to ensure file, we need write exists, move, copy, read JSON, write JSON. There we go. No, this, we don't need write JSON. We need write file. Yeah, there we go. This is exactly what I want. So we get the code. We're gonna, uh, whoops, that is not where I want my imports. We are gonna, I guess there's no reason to use sync stuff since everything is a sync anyway. We're gonna write file store, so then we're gonna give it, um, call it temp.js, right? And uh, just dump our code in there. File contents, yep, that's fine. And we're gonna wait that. And then we're gonna say that we are gonna run temp.js, right? So I, I hope it's basically just gonna override it and uh, that this basically will function, but let's give it a shot. Uh, let me have a quick look in the chat. I tried it in Docker and Windows shell, but looks weird. Uh, I don't I actually know. Does Docker and Windows installs its own shell? Because I never tried it. Like I use Docker for Windows just as a Docker thing, but that's basically about it. All right, we need allow write. Okay, that's, that's a lot of flags. There we go. Okay. Or await reserved word. Okay, wait a second. I thought it should have compiled it correctly. Right? It's not that this is really required, but so bundle entry point. Yeah. And I guess it should have compiled it, right? Uh, so what are you, what do you not like? Where's my auto suggestion for the options? Okay. I guess we need to look at the Deno bundle. Yeah, I have a Linux container running. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that's one way of doing it. But I think the VSL is mature enough right now to just use it as is basically, at least in my opinion, what I've been doing for quite some time. And it's, uh, you know, it works perfectly fine. Okay, temp.js. So we got that. That should have been compiled. Yeah, that looks for a wait. So why does it not like for a wait off? Interesting. Why are you complaining? Wait a second. That uh, for a wait off reserved, unexpected reserved word. I mean, we, I, isn't it the same bug again that I caught last time? But last time it happened because I named the file TS, uh, like the resulting file TS instead of JS. Uh, oh, Michelle, thank you very much for kind words. Uh, it's really awesome to hear that pretty much anytime. So thank you, mate. All right, uh, let me think for a second. So what is wrong with this? Uh, define, we define that file exports. Okay, so the function is not a sync and I guess this is exactly why it fails, but why is it not a sync? Why is then a bundle does not bundle it correctly? So here's the question, wait a second, let me try that. If I said then a bundle and then do test uh, simple server, the that is, it has exactly, okay, let me see, just uh, bundle.js, let's call it bundle.js, right? So we do that, cut bundle.js. It's also not gonna work, is it? Yeah, so it's the exactly same problem we had. I'm so confused right now. Uh, we had that problem last time for some reason and it's, then it fixed itself and then it just appeared again. That is so weird. Do I have a game stream planned for this week? Uh, no, I haven't posted anything, but actually planning to stream a bit of the, what do you call it? Uh, there's the Vulcan coming out pretty soon. Uh, so I, I was interested in doing that because it looks pretty damn awesome. Uh, so yes, I am gonna do a stream at some point. Don't know when just yet. Right, you know what we could do? We could just do this, right? basically, whoops, we could do the 
Node.js way of doing things, I can define a sync main function. And do, 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 main, there we go. Uh, right, okay, let me see. Deno FMT. Just gonna format everything. There we go, that's a lot nicer. Now, if we do deno, we start the server. And if we deploy that again, I think that should actually. Wait, what? What did I just do? Oh, God. I just wiped half of the thing. Okay, no. That's not what I wanted to do. Um, right, let's try this again. There we go. And it actually works. Okay, so no, wait a second. That should not work. We got temp.js. So now it actually has the main. It runs it on port 8000. How does wait, that shouldn't work, right? So the port 8000 should be already taken. Yes, by then a platform as a service. And it's it actually failed for some reason. Interesting. Should do a stream testing GeForce now. Um, we could try doing that, but I like I don't know my my connection is fine, but I, like I'm not sure I'm I I'm interested enough into you know streaming that thing. It's probably gonna be uh, relatively boring to be honest. Unexpected token age at position JSON zero. Okay, what is Wait a second. Uh, once this is what we want, right? So did I just is it was it my screw up or what? Okay, unexpected token age at position. What is happening there? Right. Let me see. So we want we just we just need to debug what is wrong, and we're kind of done here. Okay, let's do response thing. Response. Uh, bam. That is okay. So I guess we're gonna do our body, right? Should give us the body of the response. Um, <laughs> is it a function? No, it's not a function, right? Reason. Yes. Yeah, we could do ten. That that would kill the JSON conversion right now, right? Uh. Okay. Yeah. Yep. 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 That needs to be. And texts, yeah. So it's it's gotta be like this console log texts. It's the other way around. Slightly annoying, but oh, you know what? We could do. <laughs> I'm an idiot. I could, I could just do this, right? That would be so much easier. But no, I have to overcomplicate everything. There we go. Response. Hello world. Why does it show the response? <laughs> Wait a second. I'm so confused right now. Why does it give the response? From the nested, wait a second, what is happening right now? So it packages the code, it saves it, it runs the deno. Okay, here's the question. What if I ignore this bit? So what if I just say, okay, run it and forget about it, right? Because this is what we want for now. Uh, that is too many things. There we go. So I'm going to restart the server. So what we do right now is we take the code, we package it, we deploy it, and then we forget about it immediately, right? Response, hello world. Um, am I, oh, wait a sec, did I screw up my code again? No, okay, we're sending it to deploy. And this seems to be do So we are sending a post request with everything that is expected to be there to the deploy. Oh, I think I know what is happening. Wait a second. No, 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 no. I think I know what is happening. Wait, 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 wait. That is interesting. Yep, that's in, yeah, that's exactly what happens. So what happened is Deno has started another server in the back that takes exactly the same port. I assumed it will fail by saying, hey, you already have the same port taken, right? Because our main server that we uh, deploy is, is listening on the port 8000, but this test server we deploy is also listening on the port 8000. So, you know, the typically node, Python, whatever else you use, they will complain and say, hey, you know, you're trying to run the server on a port that's already taken. But for some reason, Deno actually started it there and just 
left it running in the background and it seems like it took priority over other server this this is just weird okay so now we know what the problem is um although i still don't understand why it doesn't complain that it's actually running i'm gonna uncomment this uh which means we can start our server right we can start the deployment success cool so now it's deployed our main server should still be running so if i go to 8000 we should still then open uh, yes and if i go to 9000 oh, whoops that that is not what i wanted 9000 we should see hello world it actually works cool um right so we will see this uh if the server zeroes out right but i don't know if it will because it's, it's a very stupid thing now what we need to do is i guess we need a list and um did it get to deployments, right? Okay, so the list function will be relatively easy to do. Now the problem is we wanna kill the, the deployments. So we don't need anybody here, we don't need that. Essentially what we do is uh, I mean, obviously we would want some more metadata here, but um, yeah, you know what? Let's just let's just make it a bit more interesting. Let's just give it another property. Let's say name and code. I'm gonna say name and then uh, ref is gonna be p. I'm gonna push the additional reference to it with along with a name and then here we're just gonna say JSON stringify deployments. Right, that is a bad idea. Um, let's call it deployments list. A bit more expressive and not gonna conflict with our deployments array. Map, whoop, no, 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 no. We're gonna map it and we're gonna say that each deployment is gonna be mapped to deployments.name. Right, so we're just gonna get a list of names essentially. That seems straightforward. First of all, um, do we have deno running? We should, right, kill 6870. That should kill it, cool. So theoretically we should not get any response anymore. Great, that is not working. Means we could start our server. We could send our new file. This will deploy it, which means that if I now do the um, deployments, now why is it now what did i miss all oh, right because i'm not sending any name from the command line of course uh that makes perfect sense and a name is gonna be entry point so i'm just gonna use our current entry point as a name which is perfectly fine for now so kill that um kill the deno what wait a second you are lying to me there should be another deno is no it's not it's <laughs> wait okay uh, yeah, you know what? It's okay. That's perfectly fine. I don't understand why that happens, but oh, wait a second. That's not going to work. Going to error out. We need a server here first. There we go. Now we send the request to deploy thing. So now we should have it running. There we go. And now if I list the deployments, we get our deployment back. Cool. So that actually works. And what is what is left? I mean, obviously we could do the killing thing. I guess, yeah, I guess let's do the killing thing. Um, okay, here's the question. We are using, what was the server name? I forgot. The oak thing. Yeah, so um, then no oak. How do you package in J? Uh, how do you package in Deno? I mean, you just got the Deno. Deno includes most of the commands you need out of the box. You just do Deno bundle, and it does the packaging for you. Okay, so we got the oak, and uh, what is the method for delete? It's got to have one, right? Get any content. Um, okay, does not mention it in the documentation, so we're just gonna have look at the source code real quick um da -da -dum. delete methods delete da -da 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 -da. okay so it's just dot delete that makes perfect sense so i'm gonna do 
don't delete deployments um yeah delete deployments yeah yep there we go that looks fine const a sync context so we're gonna use the body here again we're gonna have to find how to delete it actually so we're gonna use the name from the body in this case gonna send the contact the success back now here's the question so we are basically gonna have to find name and ref uh, from our deployments list right fine so that deployment name equals our name right uh, okay yeah i guess we don't care about name we just need the ref Founds name ref okay that seems good enough and let me just restart the server all right i probably should kill the uh winner it's <laughs> yeah this feels like a bug definitely sometimes kills the orphan processes the other times it just leaves them hanging in the background for some reason right so we got that so if i do the deployments we got that and uh what was the curl you know what i'm just gonna copy this request because i'm feel too lazy to press escape every time or sorry up every time i try to find it curl um da -da -da. so there we go there's the post like that thank you very much so we want delete request with name okay so we did i get the name i did get the name this is our name right name equals server we don't care about that uh two delete deployment right so we do this request oh yeah right we also need the authorization bearer thing because it is protected route so it should be authorized and everything okay cool i think that should basically remove it success true oh no it won't remove it right so it found the process right so we got now the reference to the process which we should be able to stop so we got the deno run wait a second uh, deno run which returns a process okay so what can we do with the process kill we can kill i guess close would be a bit less drastic right uh void kill sig number uh let's try closing it i guess okay so what we need to do is we're gonna need to say ref close right and then we're gonna say that deployments uh, da -da -da. okay so we need to reassign deployments i guess we don't need to do that in this case what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna say deployments so i'm just gonna do deployment ref deployments i'm gonna add another um property to the deployments deployment and by default this property which is going to be here that is running is going to be fine right so we're just going to do that i think that should actually cut it so this if that works then we're basically done for today and there was a nice hour stream okay so let's see uh okay first question did i actually okay it killed the orphan processes this time so we're running this we deploy this thing next thing we do is we list deployments right so this should still show us one perfect and we do that again and it actually seems to have killed it so yes grab deno we yeah it is defunct okay cool uh so we got the close is there like remove it i mean i guess it should disappear at one point if it's defunct right Oh, but it's still gonna hang in there because it's an orphan process. Uh, but if I close this, both of them are gonna go. Right, that's a bit annoying. Let's let's try if we can just kill it with one. That work. And you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna add to this list, so I'm not gonna. I'm gonna map them. Uh, I guess I don't even need to map them. I think the 
the, the whole process thing should serialize correctly, right? So start that. We are gonna deploy it. There we go. We are gonna, uh, so this is delete. We're first gonna list. Right, there we go. So it serializes pretty nicely. We got the whole ref with the ID and everything. And then if we run delete commands, Okay, cool, file status closed. And if I run the list again, we should see, okay. Blah, nope, PS minus A, grab demo. There we go, cool, that actually works perfectly fine. So you know what, I'm gonna be uh, lazy and add those commands to our um, make file so that you can easily test everything. Let's call it test deploy. Um, is my tab what no tabs move focus no there we go but yeah that is not exactly the nicest thing to read so let's just format it a tiny bit yep tests and got the token thing that's perfectly fine so list deploys this is gonna be that hey Chris Rock, welcome to the stream long time no see mate okay so we are gonna grab that Scroll again, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, I should split the deno here as well to make a bit more sense. There we go. So this header with authorization, and then we got one of those deployments. Cool. And then remove test deploy, I guess. It's gonna be a bit better. And then we're just gonna do that. And we're basically done here. So this is you know very limited but functional. The uh, platform is a service, if you will, a prototype, I guess. Um, not like obviously there's a lot of holes in here and a lot of issues and a lot of things that needs to be uh, straightened out and everything, but it does work and it was surprisingly easy to build and it's kind of kind of crazy that you can do that so easy with with Deno. Like the the amount of code we've written is super tiny. And I imagine the, you know, the further we go with the Deno development, the smaller the whole thing will be, which is um, pretty damn cool. Hey, James, welcome to the stream. Okay, uh, so we're done with that. Cool. I guess I can just commit that and push it. And that will be our last Deno stream. So if you guys have any questions about what I just did, or if you have any suggestions or you, I don't know, whatever, just throw them into the chat right now. And ignore temp.js and if not then we can just wrap this up here and that's basically it okay cool git commit so let's see um add basic cli and deployment functionality uh using child processes to manage separate deno instance. There we go, that sounds good enough. Sign my commit. And I think we are basically done, right? I don't think, I don't think we actually need anything else. That seems, this is good enough, okay, cool. Git push. So if you're curious about the code, it is now all in GitHub, so you can just grab and uh, have a look at that. As usual, under building X with JS, a Deno pass project. All the code should be here right now. There we go. All nice and clean. Again, it is surprisingly, like, at least to me, you know, it's surprising how tiny and clean the code is with Deno because it offers so much as a STD lib that you don't even have to import from anywhere, which is uh, kind of great. So definitely looking forward to Deno, further Deno development and to you know see where it goes basically once they release version 1.0 and once they refactor the workers. So once they add the whole isolates thing, I would definitely revisit this and probably build a proper production thing out of it because it feels like this is gonna be like one of the best ways to deploying things easily, you know, using JavaScript, at least for me. Again, I would I would need I would need to, you know, have some sort of a backwards compatibility with Node.js for some of my projects, but uh, that should be fine. 
Uh, I mean, for now, yes, it's going to be the last stream on Deno, but just for now. So once they finish, polish things up, maybe there's new cool libraries appear. I'll definitely revisit that. It's just right now, since it's not yet version 1.0 and there's a lot of like shaky parts, not finished parts. I don't really see any point in continuing because, you know, we build something now, everything breaks, we have to rebuild it. It's just going to be annoying, basically. <laughs> But I'm definitely going to revisit Deno um, at some point because it's it's a project that I'm going to keep my eye on that I will definitely contribute more to that I am definitely going to use at some point for my own projects, as I said. So this this is not a project I'm going to be dropping anytime soon. But for now, for this specific set of streams, I think that's basically going to do it. So, yeah. Um, so if you guys have any questions, suggestions, or anything else you want to chat about, throw them into the chat right now. If not, then, uh, we can just wrap it up here. That was a nice, uh, hour of streaming as usual. You can uh, join our discord server. If you wish to talk about any of that, or if you have any suggestions, ideas, cool things you've built or frameworks, you want to see me explore, just, uh, you know, join our discord, reach out to me on Twitter or whatever. Uh, if you miss the stream, it's going to be available as VOD on the Twitch immediately or on YouTube in an hour or so, whenever the YouTube decides to process it. And uh, that's basically it from my side. All right, so I've been talking for a good 30 seconds, I guess, and it doesn't seem like there's any more questions or suggestions. So thank you guys very much for watching. <coughs> God damn it. My apologies. <clears throat> So thank you guys very much for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the stream. There is going to be BXGS weekly as usual on Saturday. I am going to probably stream some video games later this week. So there's the Vulture coming out, which is, uh, you know, uh, going to be fun. Uh, so if you're interested in that, subscribe. And um, yeah, I guess that's it from my side. So again, thank you guys very much for watching. Thank you for all your kind words and your feedback. Hope you enjoyed the stuff and I see you next time. Bye.